What is going on boys and girls? We are in one of the most famous places here in Madeira, which is Santana. You've got these very typical houses, so let's go and take a look and see what all the hype is about. These houses have this signature hay roof which is very very cool and they go all the way to the ground they almost look like a tippy they're really really cool and one thing that they did here is that these houses are all some sort of shop so you have arts and crafts shops you've got sweet shops let's go and take a look inside So not only do they have regional sweets, they also have the traditional poncha. So we're going to have a nice little cup here to start the day off on the right note. This one here is made with honey and this one is made with tangerine. Round two. Toma, xixi. 24 sub 7, andare. Andare, 24 Ai. sub 7. 24 yeah, 7. So, from what the lady was explaining to us, the traditional ponche is made with sugar and orange, or tangerine, and this is made with lemon and honey instead. So it's good for your throat, essentially. If you have a throat ache, <laughs> ponche. <laughs> This is Madeira's native best drone pilot in the world. 24-7, flying. This is actually a residential house that is built still in this architectural style, right beside the tourist houses. But very cool to see that someone actually lives in one of these. These houses are always on Instagram. So one thing that we thought was that this was going to be like a village all full of these little huts. But no, it's just these three or four little huts in a specific place and the rest of the village is not in this traditional architecture, which is slightly disappointing. But seeing the houses is very nice nonetheless. Very nice experience. And the fact that they're being used as shops and just local commerce is also pretty cool. Now off to the next spot. We have just parked at the beginning of the Levada do Caldeirão Verde. This is a very popular spot up there is where the Levada starts and that's where there is a parking spot. But it was absolutely full of people doing very difficult car maneuvers. So we decided to park further down. My advice would be for you to get here early to secure a spot at the top and not have all of this confusion with all of the other cars. Right now it's around half past midday, so pretty late. And this might take us between four and six hours according to what we were seeing on the internet. So let's get to it. We've started the trail. This is called Vada do Caldeirão Verde. And it is around five to six hours, we expect six and a half kilometers. Thankfully, most of it is flat, so we don't have a lot of incline and it is in the shade. We're in this beautiful forest. Take a look. Okay, so we just came out of that tunnel around 300 meters no light whatsoever and it was absolutely full of mud so if you come and do this trail do beware and bring some nice hiking boots or something that doesn't get too wet and isn't a problem with the mud and also bring a torch you can obviously use your phone it's good enough but come prepared and get ready to crouch because lops the amazing 
drone pilot bashed his head against the top of the cave. Not a fun experience. Just keep on going. After around two hours walking, here we are. Calde del Verde, guys. We've got this huge waterfall which falls down into that nice little lake. Let's go and explore. This place is so cool. Just did a nice little ice bath there, went to the bottom. It was about three meters deep. Just had our little meal here. Really, really cool spot. Right, so we are almost ending the hike. We're on our way back. This was a 6.5 kilometer trail one way and then the same backwards obviously so around 13 kilometers we did one way in around one hour and 45 minutes so my recommendation would be for you to count with four to four and a half hours to do this whole trail to the Calde del Verde because you need to take into account the stops that you're going to do to take pictures if you want to take a dip when you reach the the little lake maybe some eating time but overall four four and a half hours is perfectly doable I really think it's worth it it's a very nice trek you do have a lot of people but the views are definitely worth it and the end of the trail is very it's honestly the best waterfall I've ever seen, even better than the one that I showed you in the previous video. So overall, super happy with this. And one very good thing about this trail is it's almost all in the shade. So you're not, you're not gonna be too hot as well, even if the air is a bit hot, which makes it a very nice walk. Joanna would disagree with me because she is not a fan of walks and climbs and hikes, but I'm enjoying myself and the rest of the gang is enjoying it as well. After that very tiring Levada trail that we did, we had this amazing meal at Restaurant Ashavsh, I believe, which means the keys. It was really, really good. The staff was super friendly and the food came very quickly and was great. So really happy with that impromptu little restaurant. And now we're here at one of the most famous viewpoints to see the sunset, which we're not gonna see because it's quite cloudy. So we just came to check the spot out. This is called Miradouro do Guindast. Let's take a quick look. Okay, here we are on top of the viewpoint. It's really, really cool because it's got a glass floor and you can see the ocean below you. Look at the waves. The sea is actually pretty rough today, so if you're scared of the sea, this might not be the viewpoint for you, but it's super, super cool. It can get pretty busy and we're not even at sunset time, so be wary of that. We just had to wait about 10 minutes to be able to get here and take a picture. At sunset time or sunrise, it's gonna be even worse, but super cool spot. Look at the other one behind. You've got these two little viewpoints overlooking the sea. So cool, there we go. Other than those two viewpoints overlooking the sea, you've also got right beside it this nice little cliff that overlooks the Guindast beach down there and the sea over here. Let's climb up this little mountain to get a better vantage point. Ponte de São Lourenço, this is on the northeasternmost 
tip of the island, northeastern, I think that's correct. This is a very cool spot to watch the sunset, I believe, but the sun is hidden from the clouds, so we are not seeing yeah, any sunset. sunset. It's a sunrise, motherfucker. Sunrise? Okay, sunrise. this is a very good spot for the sunrise. Now we are at sunset time, but there is no sunset to see. It's hidden behind the clouds over there and behind Simal because everything shines on him. So we just came to see the vibes. Really cool place. And apparently there's a nice little trail over there where you can go and explore a bunch of different beaches, which we might do in the future. And that is it for now.